Tracking these four KPIs will take you to 100K a month. Hey, what's going on ladies and gentlemen? Today we're going to be talking about how to scale your business to 100K months by knowing and tracking the right KPIs. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Justin Saunders and I run a seven figure company called Authority Income Accelerator, where we essentially help coaches and consultants eliminate the guesswork and scale their business using our proven methods. What we're looking at today is something a lot of people don't know or don't talk much about, but it's absolutely key if you want to see consistent, predictable growth inside your business. So it's so important that if you don't have this aspect of your business under control, everything will stop making sense soon and eventually start falling apart. I know this because I made the same mistake in my former businesses and it's one of the reasons I failed multiple times. But we'll look at the four KPIs you need to start paying attention to today. And if you stick around till the end, I promise you, you'll never look at your business the same again. Now I want to structure this so everything makes sense. So since we'll be touching on some key KPIs at every point of the funnel, we'll start from the top of the funnel and we'll work all the way down. And with that, let's dive in. So number one, is cost per message. When we talk about cost per message, we mean what does it cost me on average to get a message? If you're not doing a message campaign, this would be the same thing as cost per lead. And I'll tell you why this is so important is because it doesn't matter whether you're doing organic or paid ads. Every client you eventually close is going to send you a message or at some point become a lead. They're gonna tell you whether or not they want what you are offering. And if they do, you can start to consider the following. Are they a good fit? Do I wanna work with this client? And then from there, you can take them farther down your funnel, probably get them to book a call. The idea is you wanna track how many quality messages or leads you're getting, how many of those messages lead to a booked appointment, and how much it actually costs you to get one of these messages. Now, a lot of what I cover inside here is strictly correlated with our Instagram funnel. So when I say message, you can refer to the same thing as a lead. Let me just paint you a better picture. Let's say you're doing organic outreach and you send out 100 messages a day. And out of those 100 messages you get, let's just say, 50 of them respond. And out of those 50, let's just say 10 were quality conversations and then three booked an appointment and one showed up to the call. Then you can reverse engineer that and say, well, if you wanna book eight appointments per day, I need to send out 300 messages every day. And then you can start optimizing for things like, how do I get more responses? And from there, how do I get more quality conversations? Then how do I get more booked appointments from those conversations? And finally, how do I get more people to show up? You see how tracking your numbers can give you much, much more clarity on which levers you need to pull inside your business to get results. This is just the simple organic side of things. The real magic happens when you're running ads. And I personally like ads because it's way more predictable. Let's say you decide to spend $1,000 on ads next month. And by the end of the month, you get 80 messages. That means your cost per message would be around $12.05. Then you can begin to optimize better results like, how do I lower my cost per message? Maybe it's a better ad strategy. Maybe it's different copy. Maybe I'll try a different angle. There's so many ways you could go from there. But the lower your cost per message, the better. Because when you're getting messages for less, you can save more money on on the board to reduce how much it costs to get a client. Now, it's very important that I make this note here is I say getting a cheaper cost for message is good on the front end, but when you start to optimize your funnel and go into some more KPIs I'm about to share here in a minute, it doesn't really matter if you're paying more on the front end. Now, save that because I'll cover more later on in this video, but I wanna get into number two, which is your actual cost per booked appointment. So when it comes to appointments, you wanna focus on quantity at first, but as time goes on, on, you want to get more clients. So you've got to shift your focus to quality. So in the beginning, you want to get as many people as possible on your calendar just to get the ball rolling and build that baseline data. I call this the momentum wave inside your business. But after a while, you're going to have to add more friction, disqualify more people and only talk to the highest quality people. So for example, let's say you are in the business coaching space and you're booking everybody at first, you're going to have a low cost per booked appointment at first. But imagine after talking to all these people for a couple weeks, you realize that people doing less than 5k a month usually don't close because they can't afford your services. So what's your move? Of course, you'll need to add questions to your application form that gives you an idea of how much someone makes and if they can even afford your services. I call this adding friction to the funnel. And if they can't, then you just cancel them right away. Yes, you're gonna have less appointments, your cost per booked appointment's gonna go up, but you'll be doing yourself a favor because what's the point of hopping on a call with someone if you've got raw data that says they might not be able to pay you when you can spend the same time talking to someone more likely to close. So with your cost per booked appointment, you're looking at things like, am I booking appointments? 
how much does it cost to me to book an appointment and does it make sense to book this appointment? Am I okay with spending more money to get higher quality people on the calendar? I know for me, I'd rather pay $500 to talk to our ideal type of clients than $100 for a bunch of tire kickers every single day because I'm gonna close more deals and it's less time on my end. And most importantly, what can I do to increase the likelihood of these people showing up on the call, otherwise known as your show rate, which brings us up to number three, show rate and cost per show. Now they've gone from message to booked appointments, the next step in your funnel would be to take the call, right? But if you've been doing this long enough, you'd know it's one thing for people to book an appointment and it's a whole other thing for them to actually show up to the call. I know it's kind of hard to believe that someone would go out of their way, fill out an application and then say they're gonna show up to the call but not actually show up to the call. It's a crazy world we live in. But this is where tracking your show rate really comes into handy because it gives you a clear picture of how many people actually show after they book and this allows you to have measures in place to bump that up. For example, there's something we do inside our business that's been a total game changer. And that is by having a before our call page. Basically, after someone books an appointment, we send them to a page where we have a video that explains everything we offer. And then there's some case studies, testimonials that show what we do and how it could benefit them. You could even take it to the next level and make it something that's a non-negotiable that they have to watch before even hopping on the call. I know some of our clients do this, but the whole point behind this is there was actually a Harvard business study done and they said it takes about six hours worth of content before someone buys from you. And especially if we're running ads to get cold traffic, this is how you're going to bypass that. And this has been one of the things that's helped our show rate go from a 51% to a 73%. And that's huge because say you have a 20% close rate and you take 30 calls in a month, that means for every 30 calls you take in a month, you close six of those. Imagine if you optimize your show rate and started getting, say, 15 extra calls a month. That'd be three extra deals you're closing just by fixing your show rate. And for example, let's just say you charge 10K per client. That's an extra 30 grand in the pocket every month for something you had to work on for only a few hours. Another way you can use your show rate to get better results is paying attention to how much it costs you to get one person to show up. That's your cost per show. Because if you've optimized your show rate, and we'll use the same numbers we've been using so it all makes sense. So if you optimized your show rate and you decided to spend $1,000 on ads in a month, and by the end of the month, you get 80 messages and nine appointments. If you've got, say, an 80% show rate, that means seven people are gonna show up. And if you do the math, that puts your cost per show at approximately $143. That means every time you spend $143, you get an appointment that actually shows up. Well, from there, it's easy to decide how many appointments that actually show up up do I want this month? 20? All I've got to do is spend 20 times 143, which is $2,860 on ads. And you see how straightforward that is. So now that we have this, let's move on to the last one, which is number four, cost per acquisition. This is my favorite because this is what grows the business. When we talk about cost per acquisition, we're basically saying how much does it cost you to acquire one client? And it goes into play with everything else that we've been talking about. We'll be using the same numbers we've been using just to keep it for simplicity's sake. So the next thing you need to determine is what's your close rate. Let's say you've got a 20% close rate, right? And that's very attainable, by the way. Typically, I like to see it closer to around 30, but let's just use 20% to be conservative here. So with a 20% close rate and seven shows, you're going to close one deal. And that puts your cost per acquisition at $1,000. That means it costs you $1,000 to close a deal. I know that sounds outrageous, like I got to spend $1,000 to get one client, but it's actually reasonable if you think about it when it comes to margins. I mean, if you charge $10,000, it means every time you spend $1,000 on ads, you make $9,000 back. Would it make sense to keep spending 1K to make 9K over and over again? I mean, I know it would for me. I guess my question for you is, if every time you spend a dollar, you made $9 back, how many times are you gonna spend that dollar? As many times as possible, right? When it comes to this, you can just reverse engineer that and say, well, if I charge 10K and I've gotta spend 1K on ads to close one deal, how much do I need to spend to close 10 deals and get to 100K months? At the end of the day, these KPIs all work together to help you get better results for your business. Because if you take it from the top and ramp up how many messages you're getting, that'd mean more booked appointments, more shows, and more closed deals. And I know this might look overwhelming, but you don't have to have it all figured out in the very beginning. When I started tracking my KPIs, I started with just the basic Google Sheet. But then I realized how important it is to actually have a pulse on my numbers. So 
I took it to the next level. I invested in a data coach and spent over 36 grand on this one coach for a four month period to learn everything about tracking. And I put that all into a simplified sheet that all of our clients get. Everything's in there and all you have to do is just punch in the numbers and it takes care of the rest for you. Because at the end of the day, how do you run a business successfully without numbers? How do you know what's working and what's not working? How do you know what you should pay more attention to? And how do you make the right decisions? That's it for now. I hope you found value in this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos. We post every Monday and Thursday. And if you've got any questions or takeaways, leave a comment down below and I'll take my time to reply to every one of them.